This next one is about um, exploring identity and its loss in the workplace. Uh, and this was conducted uh, with the Druze community in Israel. And just some historical, um, some context on um, who the Druze community is, uh, and I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly, is um, it's the, the Arab Druze community uh, in Israel is historically has had good relations uh, with the, the Jewish Israelis, um, particularly the younger Druze due to their involvement in the uh, Israeli army. Um, but there's a new uh, nationality bill um, that kind of blindsided the, the Jewish community uh, because it was exclusionary towards non-Jews. Um, and so the researchers picked this community to, um, to study um, collective identity loss. Uh, and uh, collective identity loss in general is um, this idea that um, intergroup bias can be reduced if, member, if group members conceive of themselves as part of uh, an inclusive category. Um, and so <clears throat> the question here was, will a common identity loss predict radical forms of action for younger Druze? And the methods here were the authors uh, recruited these 154 participants um, of this community and surveyed them uh, on things like reactions to the nationality bill, how much they felt surprised by it, uh, and, and so on. And then they assessed common identity loss by uh, using this three item scale that addressed the explicit distancing from the national identity, the loss of connections with the Jewish majority, and the strengthening of one's Arab identity. And then the next measure the authors studied was their willingness to partake in one, the violent actions to protest the nationality bill. And they have four items to, to, to measure this uh, on throwing stones, partaking in confrontations with the police, partaking in violent protests, and inducing anti Jewish incitement. Uh, secondly, uh, in non-normative, non-violent actions, so like blocking roads, disturbing public events with public figures uh, who signed the bill, shaming political figures, uh, and refusing to clear protests. And thirdly, uh, in normative actions like signing petitions, organizing protests, uh, and sharing relative material, relevant material on social media. And what they found here um, was that age uh, was negatively correlated with both common identity loss and tendencies for violent action. Um, the Druze also reported feeling relatively high levels of harmony with Jews prior to the bill and indicated the passing of the bill um, surprised them. Um, they had a measure of violent action, which was low, uh, much lower than the non-normative kind of non-violent um, action tendencies and also from normative action tendencies. And then finally, the younger Jews were more motivated for violent action in general. The association between a common a sense of common identity loss uh, and violent action was strongest at the age of 18, uh, which is when the Jews typically enlist in the army and became consistently weaker every year until uh, the age of 27. And so Anapriya uh, kind of related this to the workplace uh, in a number of ways, one of which was looking at program curation. Um, because the authors advise that the programs that stress common connections uh, do and also focus on creating realistic, realistic expectations on part of minority group members to avoid potential backlash and have in place mechanisms to continue contact and dialogue between groups after the official program ends. And so uh, workplaces can, can attempt to hold bridge building sessions regularly to ensure that the team is cohesive, inclusive, and resilient against um, exclusion or conflict and uh, follow up later to, to monitor if improving contact had any impact. Uh, but it does have to be done carefully uh, with a lot of sensitivity. Um, and she had a couple other um, points about creating policies carefully and, and having maybe age specific interventions. Um, but um, yeah, that's what, that's what we have with this one. The, the, a, the age correlation reminds me a little bit of like, I think the one we did, we saw last week where there was in the Turkish Greek uh, conflict where mm -hmm. the older they got, Oh, I can't remember which side it was. Was it the? Uh, maybe Greeks. this was the. Oh, the I think it the, was the Greeks who the were Greeks. more the, likely to be prejudiced and, and biased mm -hmm. as they were younger. And it was like the opposite of the Turks. We're pretty sure. Oh, interesting. So this is almost the opposite then. Because what we're seeing here is the minority group, the younger they are, the more the more they're willing to take sort of like more extreme measures. Right? Yeah. Whereas the... But this, like the, the I, I feel like the, the space, the environment is, is like key here. Whereas like, sure. 
it was it, when we were talking about Cyprus, it was the the Turkish Cypriot, like, I, I mean, that, that place was more of like, wasn't it that the Greek Cypriots were there? Like they had a longer um, relation with that land as compared to the Turkish Cypriots. I don't remember. Whereas like this might be the opposite. I'm not sure. I don't uh, know like the history, but like the Druze community, like they're, they're Arabic speaking, um, my minority right but they they might have a more of an attachment to the land i i don't know i don't know I, but i feel like that is a maybe a a key factor in this conflict and that one is like more of the the relation to the to the land yeah i mean well it's interesting though that that if you're older you're 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 more prone to con you're more prone to uh, maintain a common identity and you're less prone towards violent action if you're older. So the younger people are more prone to violent action. So the, the older people who have like just more years on the land seem to be, I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know. I can't. What, what was that? Sorry. What was the bill that was passed? It was a um, <clears throat> nationality bill that blindsided the Jewish community. It was exclusionary towards non-Jews. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So if this is this is all about common identity loss, right? So they right. are they are losing their their sense of of group identity as mm. you know both their ethnic minority as Druze and then also their you know the language that they're speaking. So yeah, I mean that makes sense to me, right? If if someone is completely like ignoring and um kind of ostracizing a part of my group identity so i feel like i'm losing it i'll be more prone to to react right because then because that group identity becomes salient because that's what's being threatened right well and uh, uh, let's see so um natalie just put this in it's the, the bill, it says, the, so the bill, oh, the law does three things. Uh, it states that the right to exercise national self-determination is, is unique to Jewish people. It establishes Hebrew as originally, uh, Israel's official language and Dengar's Arabic language, widely spoken Arabic. It's related to a special status. It establishes Jewish settlement as a national value and mandates that the state will labor to encourage and promote its establishment. Man, they, they sure know how to maintain their conflicts over there. <laughs> not, not not to say that we don't but you know it's it's amazing that every there's like identity plays in a role in conflict in like every almost every nation you know and it's just it's just yeah. crazy yeah i think that um as well with like identity is also just the, that power dynamic so even yeah. um in this case as well as uh the case last week um you know the jewish israeli have a certain power over the Druze community, the same way the Greek Cypriots had a certain level of power um, over the Turkish Cypriots. And so I think that the reason in both cases that it's the younger people who are more prone to violent action is probably just because almost like no longer accepting, like being accepting of uh, what the status quo is told um, is supposed to be. And I think that even when you look at the United States, you know, mm. with, um, you know, African-Americans, um, a lot of the younger generations are actually the ones who were, all the older generations, yeah. don't get me wrong, are, are fighting, but a lot of them have also sometimes accepted certain things or, you know, taught their kids or would just be careful towards the younger generations. Those are the ones who are like, no, like, you know, we're no longer going to accept the status quo. So they may be more prone to uh, more extreme action than older generations. Yeah. Well, young, younger people are typically less risk averse and they're, and they, and they're, they have more, hope that things can change i think than older generations where they're yeah we're like kind of like we were saying alexis is like they're more accepting of like status quo you know kind of why fight it you know yeah um but it can also be a factor of i mean trying different channels of willingness to utilize other methods of getting to the same goal um like i mean maybe in terms of well let's let's vote or let's launch campaigns 
um, you know, informational campaigns or let's lobby people or um, let's raise, you know, money so that we can back certain candidates that will support those causes that we want. Whereas, um, yeah, younger people, a lot of times are like, you know what, y'all have been doing all that. Y'all have tried all that stuff. Didn't work. Let's do this. Let's, you know, let's act. And, um, and then also like with, in terms of the risk averseness of older people, which I, I consider myself kind of an older person, but um, yeah, they kind of have more to lose. And so the, the, they're thinking of more things. So, sure. um, you know, you're thinking of the land that's been in your family and that you're trying to hold on to. So you need to keep working so you can keep paying the taxes so you can keep the land. Or you're mm. thinking of being able to provide for your children or your family or your elderly relatives. And so it's not that you don't care about the issues. It's just you also have other things that you, you are responsible for. And um, yeah, you have to balance it. You have to weigh it out. And yeah, then sometimes no, a, you're definitely thinking like, you know what, this is a young person's fight and <laughs> let's let them have it, you know? Yeah, that's actually a really good point about like, you know, as you get older, you you gain more and you have more interests and you have kind of more to lose a lot of times. So it makes you more risk averse potentially, but, and then, but yeah, I'm trying to tra like, translate this to the workplace. Like, I think we brought up this, this kind of, um, idea last week where it's like, you know, if you have two, uh, you have multiple departments and like one department's a little bit smaller and, than this other department and, and the smaller department, they're like, the, the, the company says, you know, by the way, like we need to, you know, sort of cut expenses. So we're just going to cut, you know, salaries or something or resources in this one department, but we're going to keep this other, the, the sales department big, but we're going to, we're going to cut uh, resources in the IT department or something like that. And how that would make that department feel in terms of their value and and defensiveness, you know, and their interaction with the departments that aren't being cut and stuff like that. Absolutely. Or take, you know, one employee, we have two employees involved in conflict. One has more seniority, so she's got more invested in the 501k and, you know, is looking towards you know, in another 10 years, I get to retire. So I want to maintain, I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to achieve a whole lot more or accomplish, you know, a lot more. I'm trying to maintain when, and the conflict could be with a person that's newer in the organization that is trying to position themselves, you know, maybe even get to that same position as the other person. And so what they're valuing are actually two different things. They want kind of two different things. One is kind of hoping to stay the status quo, you know, not cause any rifts or anything like that because I've got good seniority, um, you know, years of good performance appraisal. Um, everyone thinks highly of me more or less. And I just want to ride this out, you know, keep doing what I've been doing. And the other person's like, well, no, you know, this has got to change. This can't go on this way because they don't have as much to lose. They don't have as much invested right. in this particular workplace. And so they can challenge more and, yep. um, you know, they can cause more weight. They don't have as much invested. They don't have as much to lose. Yep. But yep. would that, would that in turn lead to identity loss of the, the other, like the older person or well, it's, it's almost like it's, I'm wondering it, if that scenario, Tony, relates to like this this article of of I, like having part of your identity feel like it was being lost, you know, through, through in the workplace. I'm just I'm just thinking out loud here. I don't know. I you know, that actually brings up an interesting point because I think I was just this just dawned from what you just said, Sarah. Um, probably someone who's been there longer identifies more with the organization where someone newer coming in or younger, or whatever, 
just doesn't identify as closely with the organization. Their their identity is not integrated with the the sort of group identity, the work organizational identity. So for an older person to shift away from the common identity would be a would be sort of a more major hit to their self concept than it would be for someone who's new who just like is not as fused mm-hmm. in terms of identity with that organization. So it does make, so that kind of makes sense too, as to like why someone who's younger is willing to not a be a part of the common identity and like take extreme measures to change sort of the status quo. Yeah. And like think about even organizations we've worked with, sometimes the people who've been there the longest are the most resistant to change. They're the most resistant oh, yeah. to being mm-hmm. open to new ways of communicating and new ways to managing conflict because because it's new, it's different. Yeah. And the old way is more tied to, you know, the culture that they feel like they're a part of. Yeah, their old way is more tied to their self-concept. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like, if you change the organization, you start changing some piece of me almost, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they re- that is like, and it really, in, a way of integrating identity. I mean, you could also call it like internalization of the of the culture. Mm-hmm. And resistance to change. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yep. 